So our goal is really to make people become far more aware of the extraordinary heritage that we have uh, as citizens of the world uh, when we look at biodiversity. Biodiversity is disappearing at an alarming rate as, as we have so often heard. But what we find also is that most of the public don't even uh, grasp what this means. What is biodiversity and how does it translate in something that can uh, uh, impact me or something that I can, I can, that transcends my life and transcends the future. The, there are eight galleries that each tell a different chapter, if you will, in a story, in a story that tells, uh, that tells you about biodiversity and the natural history of Panama, using it as an example of, of the biodiversity of the world. And the first thing that you're going to see is an introduction to what biodiversity is. It's a gallery called uh, The Ramp of Life, and it'll tell you the basics of biodiversity. It also will assault you with, with a collage, a mural, a glass mural of the uh, umpteen vari varieties of life that you can see in Panama. Uh, then you go right on to this uh, gallery. It's actually a theater. It's called Panamarama. It tells you, Panamarama is a surround theater with 14 screens where you are surrounded by Panama's ecosystems and you go from a coral reef through a rainforest, a cloud forest, and down to the dairy and, and different ecosystems, but not from the perspective of a human being, but from, a, from the perspective of a wild creature. So you're gonna be a fish for a while swimming in the coral reef, then you're gonna be a turtle that is gonna lay its eggs. So it's swimming up, up, and it comes out of the beach and it starts laying its eggs, and you go on and metamorphose into a mammal that is going through the swamp lowland forest and eventually you, you morph again into a quetzal. You're going along with another quetzal, flying through the cloud forest, looking at the mist, at the bromeliads, at the orchids, everything hanging down from the trees, and so on, until finally you're going along with another jaguar in the deep jungles of the Darien. Then you go on to um, the human path, which is an exhibit that explains how humans uh, came to the isthmus and came through onto other parts of the Americas, used the isthmus as a link, and uh, what that history is, uh, what, how that history interacted with uh, the ecosystems, the tropical ecosystems that they found here, the foods that they found, the foods that they brought, the colonial era, how Panama's position as uh, a nexus, a hub, uh, was critical and pivotal in the Panama, in Panamanian history. And it shows that not only, the, uh, not only the, the biological connectivity of the place, but also the human connectivity that Panama has been characterized about. This, the following gallery is called Oceans Divided. That's where you find two huge aquaria, really the largest aquaria that exists in, will exist in Central America. One is depicting the Caribbean, which is a part of the Atlantic. It depicts a Caribbean ecosystem, and on the other side, it depicts the Pacific ecosystem. And these two oceans are only 50 miles apart in Panama, but they couldn't be more different for two tropical oceans. Right. The Caribbean is full of coral reefs. It's a very colorful ocean. It is pouring nutrients, which means you don't have big schools of fish. What you have is a lot of diversity right. and color. The Pacific is extraordinarily prolific in Panama. There are enormous schools of fish, and that abundance of life uh, feeds a huge fishery. Uh, we have a, a very productive fishery in Panama, but they obey to, uh, they are the result of very different ecological conditions uh, just across the isthmus, right. 50 miles from each other. So in Oceans Divided, you can see the effect that splitting the oceans had in the ecology of each of these two oceans. You, uh, your journey culminates um, in the Hall of Interdependence. The Hall of Interdependence is where you learn that all organisms are interlinked and that that a linkage, that co-evolution, the joint evolution of organisms reaches its summit in the tropical rainforests of the world, in the, in the hot, humid inner tropics. You go through uh, the hallway um, or the hall of interdependence and you are assaulted almost by this gigantic uh, sculpture of a fig tree. It's a straggler fig and it's a tree that depends very tightly on a specific species of wasp which breeds within the tree to pollinate itself. It's a fascinating story and it's one of many stories, over, over 30 different stories of tales from the rainforest, if you will. 
that take advantage of the wealth of scientific information that is available in this part of the world. It's where the case study about, about biodiversity uh, materializes. We don't want people to, to, to just feel like bio, that biodiversity is this uh, extraordinarily large body of life that you can tally, you know, 935 species of bird, 227 species of frogs, uh, 10,000 species of vascular plants. Those are all numbers. What we want people, we want people to fall in love with biodiversity, to see how sublime it is that a hummingbird would evolve a beak that is 180 degrees around that fits only in one species of Heliconia and in no other. And that, that makes it a forced relations with, between the two of them. If the hummingbird becomes extinct, the, poly, the, the bromeliad or the Heliconia in this case, loses its only pollinator and becomes extinct as well. We are pretty much on track right now. It's a very exciting project. The year 2010 is going to be uh, an international year of biodiversity in coordination with the United Nations. So it, right. it, it's going to be one of the marquee events of that year. Uh, the museum aims to be attractive to everyone. At the same time, uh, as an institution, we want to target very strongly young children or kids that will be seeing the museum as part of the school curriculum. Once you lose one species, that's gone forever. You've taken that species away for every human being that will come from here on, because you can never bring them back. We want people to come out of the museum not only feeling that there is this astounding diversity of, of life out here in the tropics, but also going a bit deeper and understanding that it's not just numbers, it's a sublime set a sublime world contained within itself in the rainforest of thousands and thousands of interdependencies amongst birds, amongst plants, amongst orchids, amongst microorganisms, amongst predators and prey. The level of complexity that that relation attains in the tropical rainforest is far exceeds uh, that le the level found elsewhere in the world and we want people to be able to experience that or at least understand how complex and how fascinating it is.